Have you ever thought, if I knew then what I know today, I would have, and you fill in the blank. Yes, most of us would do some things differently if we knew in the past what we know today. The past we cannot change, but what about the future? Is it possible to know today what will happen in the months and years ahead? Is there a trustworthy source that predicts future events? Is this possible? Well, surprisingly, many seem to think so. Consider the millions of people around the world who consult fortune tellers. And then there are those who check their horoscope each day. Others read books by modern and ancient self-proclaimed prophets. At the turn of a new year, various prognosticators tell us what to expect for the upcoming year. Of course, by the end of that year, we've probably forgotten all their failed predictions. But the question remains, can anyone really know what will happen in the future? Is there a reliable source that you can turn to that reveals what you can expect in the days to come? Believe it or not, there is. On today's program, I'm going to explain what that source is and why you can trust it. I'm going to show you that that source is reliable, that it predicted many past events before they happened, that it accurately predicted many cultural and geopolitical events that we observe in our world today, and that there are still more events predicted for the years just ahead. And these will affect you and your loved ones. This source has proven itself time and again to accurately predict the future, not in some obscure reference that is open to numerous interpretations, but in clear, unmistakable statements. Now, if you'd like to learn more about that source and why you can trust it, stay tuned. Welcome to Tomorrow's World, where on today's program we're going to look at what many consider to be the most important book ever written. This book, as you may have already guessed, is known as the Bible. You have no doubt heard about it, but do you know that between one-fourth and one-third of it is devoted to prophecy, meaning telling the future in advance? It not only teaches us the purpose for life and how to live, but it also accurately foretells the future. Now, I realized that to say that any book can accurately foretell the future is a bold assertion. But I ask you to consider the following pieces of evidence. Exhibit number one. The Bible predicted 1900 years ago that man would be capable of destroying all life from planet Earth. Now, please note that I did not say he would destroy the world but only that he is capable of doing so. Since the beginning of man's existence, men have been killing one another. Some kill out of anger or jealousy. Others kill to take what doesn't belong to them. Then there are the millions killed in wars and conflicts between nations. For most of man's existence, warfare has been waged by primitive and mechanical devices. Men killed with rocks, clubs, swords, and arrows. Even gunpowder and explosives, while deadly, only killed a relative few at a time. Now, for sure, if you throw enough rocks, shoot enough arrows, or shoot enough bullets, large numbers can and have been killed. Any student of history is amazed by the sheer numbers of casualties inflicted in past wars by these relatively primitive methods. But today, we've come up with more ingenious methods that can kill hundreds thousands, and even multiple millions in an instant. Mankind took killing to a new level in the last century. Newly invented airplanes dropped powerful bombs, killing dozens or even hundreds at a time. Huge guns mounted on ships sank enemy ships with hundreds aboard. Submarines launched torpedoes into surface ships, sending men and machinery to the bottom of the oceans. And then came the ultimate killing devices nuclear, chemical, 
and biological weapons and the ability to deliver them anywhere in the world. Only then could it truly be said that all intelligent life could be destroyed on our planet. To learn more about today's topic, visit www.twcanada.org to read or order your free copy of Prophecy Fulfilled, God's Hand in World Affairs. You can also order by calling us at 1-866-784-7895. You will also receive a free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine. Call 1-866-784-7895. Call today. Do you realize that this possibility, the destruction of all life, was given in advance in the Bible? Not in some obscure, difficult to understand passage, but an easy to understand language in a prominent passage. Leading up to this prediction, we read in the 24th chapter of Matthew that Jesus told His disciples that the magnificent temple in the city of Jerusalem would be destroyed. Notice that in verse 2. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. This happened 39 years later, just as Jesus predicted. While very large Herodian stones still outline the Temple Mount, not a single one of the multi-ton stones that were once part of the beautiful temple complex is still standing. In response to Jesus' prediction, His disciples asked, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Notice that the first question involved the destruction of the temple, but the second and third questions involved Christ's return at the end of the age. Jesus responded by giving them various signs that would indicate the end is near. He first described the proliferation of false religion. This would be followed by wars, famines, and disease epidemics. Now, we've always had these problems, but the sense is that these problems would escalate as we get closer to the end. As Jesus said, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. In the 20th century, we saw two great wars that engulfed the entire world. Never before did we see such massive conflicts affecting the entire world. Where previous wars killed tens or even hundreds of thousands, these two wars saw casualties in the tens of millions. And here in the 21st century, we see the revival of religious and ethnic conflict. Now, one would think that man could progress past these problems, but such is not the case. And Jesus predicted precisely where this will lead. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved or saved alive. Here is a prediction made over 1900 years ago that ethnic, religious, and national conflicts would bring mankind to the brink of self-imposed annihilation. Was He right? And how could He know? Consider that when Jesus spoke these words, nuclear technology, intercontinental ballistic missiles, chemical and biological weapons used on a worldwide scale couldn't be understood by His audience. Yet He accurately predicted what we now know is possible. The conditions and necessary methods to destroy all life on earth are now a reality. To understand the magnitude of this prediction, consider what you might predict for the world 2,000 years from now. How accurate do you think your predictions will be? Now let us consider exhibit number two. At the same time that man could destroy all life, man would develop technologies that would allow for instant communication over great distances. Now think about this. For most of man's existence, communication has been very primitive compared to what we take for granted. Today we pick up a mobile device, punch in a few numbers, 
and talk to someone on the other side of the world. We can take cell phones, smartphones, tablets, and personal computers for granted. But it hasn't always been this way. These are very recent inventions, and not one of which existed when I was born. Consider the technological advances that had to occur to make all this possible. Communication satellites run by small but very powerful computers, transmitters, and receivers. They had to be put in orbit by giant rockets. Think about it. Who would have imagined such a thing 1,900 years ago? But did you know that there's a prophecy in the Bible that could only be fulfilled if such technologies existed? The Bible tells us that there are going to be two men who walk the earth at the time of the end, who will cause various kinds of plagues over a three and a half year period through the power of God. But after that, God will allow the enemies of these two witnesses to put them to death. And even the location of their murder is given in Scripture. Now this is a prophecy yet to be fulfilled, but the means by which it can be fulfilled is already in place. Notice what the Bible says that will happen after they are killed. When they finish their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them, overcome them, and kill them. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Now that's Jerusalem. Then those from the peoples, tribes, tongues, and nations will see their dead bodies three and a half days and not allow their dead bodies to be put into graves. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them, make merry, and send gifts to one another, because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. The time element is less than four days. Yet people all over the world are going to rejoice at the death of these two men. Less than a hundred years ago, it would have been impossible for people all over the earth to even know of such an event in such a short time. Furthermore, the prophecy states that, Then those from the peoples, tribes, tongues, and nations will see their dead bodies three and a half days. Until television, satellite transmissions, the internet, and other electronic devices that are capable of sending pictures instantly over great distances, this was impossible. But not today. Who could have imagined such a thing when the last book of the Bible was written about 1800 years ago? We've examined two crucial pieces of evidence validating the accuracy of the Bible. Now let us move to exhibit number three. The Bible predicted the coming of its central character hundreds of years in advance. Although there are dozens of very specific prophecies of Jesus coming, we only have time for a very few. The Bible tells us about a man named Jesus who claimed to be the Son of God. This assertion was backed by miracles that could not be denied, but in the end, jealousy caused the leaders of the Jews to have him crucified. This was a devastating blow to his followers who thought he would set up his kingdom at that time. We're told that three days later he was resurrected from the dead and that there were many who saw him after his resurrection. The Apostle Paul records in 1 Corinthians the 15th chapter beginning in verse 3, for I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that He was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. After that He was seen by over five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present, but some have fallen asleep or died. The story of His resurrection is considered by some to be no more than an interesting story that shouldn't be taken seriously. After all, that was a long time ago. Do we even know that He was a real person? Can we know? The answer is, yes we can. The Bible, of course, is one source with a number of different authors affirming Jesus' existence, such as Matthew, Mark, Luke. 
John, Paul, James, Peter, and Jude. This evidence should not be rejected because someone doesn't want to believe in God or the Bible. But these are not the only voices affirming His existence. Tacitus recounts the events surrounding the fire that destroyed half of Rome during the reign of Nero in 64 AD. Many Romans believe that the fire was ordered by Nero for various reasons, but to quell the rumors, he set about to blame and persecute Christians. Consequently, to get rid of the report, Nero fastened the guilt and inflicted the most exquisite tortures on a class hated for their abominations, called Christians by the populace. Christus, from whom the name had its origin, suffered the extreme penalty during the reign of Tiberius at the hands of Pontius Pilate. To learn more about today's topic, visit www.twcanada.org to read or order your free copy of Prophecy Fulfilled, God's Hand in World Affairs. You can also order by calling us at 1-866-784-7895. You will also receive a free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine. Call 1-866-784-7895. Call today. Further evidence of Jesus and His resurrection can be found in extra-biblical references to what happened to Jesus' disciples. We know that many people have died for a cause they believed in, even if the cause was an error. But there is something very different about the death of Christ's first apostles. The Bible tells us that they were eyewitnesses to Jesus' death and resurrection to life. It even tells us that Thomas refused to believe the reports until he was actually confronted by the resurrected Christ. We are told that he was not present when Jesus first appeared to the other apostles. And when they told him they had seen the resurrected Jesus, he responded in John the 20th chapter and verse 25, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Eight days later, Jesus appeared to all of them again, and this time Thomas was present. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here, and look at my hands, and reach your hand here, and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. To say the least, these men were convinced by indisputable evidence that the man named Jesus, called the Christ, from the town of Nazareth did in fact rise from the dead after being in the grave three days and three nights. And various historical records tell us they were so convinced they preached Jesus and His message of a coming Kingdom of God until they were silenced as martyrs. There have been many martyrs down through history who died for a cause they believed in. But these men were not deceived. They knew whether or not what they proclaimed was true and it is inconceivable that they would have given their lives for something they knew to be untrue. They knew that Jesus was crucified and resurrected, and not a single one of them recanted to save his life. Only John died a natural death, but he too suffered greatly for Christ and never gave up his belief in the resurrected Christ. Amazingly, early scriptures predicted a coming Messiah who would give His life in exchange for the rest of mankind. And some of the details are precise and recorded to be exactly fulfilled. The prophet Isaiah tells us that the Son of God would come as a normal human being. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He has no form or comeliness, and when we see Him, there is no beauty that we should desire Him. We are next told in this remarkable 53rd chapter of Isaiah that He would be rejected by men and that men would not comprehend who He really was. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from Him. 
He was despised and we did not esteem Him. This rejection by His generation and by His own people would bring about a brutal death, but it would not be in vain. Since we have all broken God's law, the violation of which is death, He would substitute His life for our lives. And this too was accurately predicted. Surely He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed Him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon Him, and by His stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on Him the iniquity of us all. For the transgression of my people He was stricken. Although He had done nothing to deserve death, eyewitnesses tell us that Jesus was put to death beside thieves. Yet when He was buried, it was a rich man who placed Him in His own prepared tomb. Notice how Isaiah 53 verse 9 accurately foretold this. And they made His grave with the wicked, but with the rich at His death, because He had done no violence, nor was any deceit in His mouth. Now notice these predictions found in another portion of the Bible, Psalm 22, and I'll begin in verse 16. They pierced my hands and my feet. This is exactly what happened. Jesus was stretched out over a stake or cross, and they drove nails into His hands and feet to secure Him. Not only does this passage predict death by crucifixion, it also tells us details about the disposal of His clothing. Here it is in verse 18. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. The biblical books of Matthew, Luke, and John describe the fulfillment of this prophecy. Here's John's account in chapter 19, verses 23 and 24. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took His garments and made four parts, to each soldier a part, and also the tunic. Now the tunic was without seam, woven from the top in one piece. They said therefore among themselves, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be that the scripture might be fulfilled which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Of course, during the act of casting lots for a tunic and dividing his garments, it's highly unlikely that they gave any thought to the book of Psalms. They didn't realize that they were fulfilling a prophecy made hundreds of years earlier and recorded as evidence that Jesus was the prophesied Messiah. But fulfilling this biblical prophecy is exactly what they did. We have seen that the Bible predicted hundreds and thousands of years in advance very specific events. It predicted man would someday come to the place where he would have the power to destroy all life from this planet of ours. It predicted nearly instant communication where in the future people all over the earth will be able to actually see two men put to death and lying unburied in the streets of Jerusalem for three and a half days. And the Bible predicted the coming of Jesus Christ in very specific detail. Now what else does the Bible tell us? What can we expect in the future? Here's something vital that you need to know about the near future of our world. Today we see the Middle East in conflict and confusion. The very tiny state of Israel is surrounded by hostile nations who would love to drive the Jews into the Mediterranean Sea. Now, do you realize that the Bible predicted some 2,500 years ago that this would be the condition at the end of the age? In the book of Zechariah and in chapter 12, we read the following, Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. 
Do you realize that the Jews were not in control of Jerusalem from 135 A.D. until June 1967? During all that time it was impossible for this scripture to be fulfilled. But today we see Jews in Jerusalem, and Jerusalem a troubled spot on the world stage. What does the Bible tell us will happen next? For I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as He fights in the day of battle. And in that day His feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, and the Lord shall be King over all the earth. Today we see conflict between individuals and nations with ever-escalating weapons of mass destruction. Only the returning Jesus Christ will save us from total annihilation. He will then set up a harmonious kingdom that will bring peace and harmony to our troubled planet. That's the message the Bible proclaims, and that's the message we preach here on Tomorrow's World. The Bible is full of prophecies, and most are for the time just ahead of us. Now, if you'd like to learn more about what the Bible predicts for your future, go to our website shown on the screen. There you will find today's featured booklet, Prophecy Fulfilled, God's Hand in World Affairs. In it you will see how many of the trends in today's world were predicted in the pages of the Bible. You will be better able to understand what is happening and why. But more importantly, you'll learn that beyond today's bad news, there is good news on the horizon. Be sure to write down the website shown on the screen and check out our free booklet, Prophecy Fulfilled, God's Hand in World Affairs. And be sure to come back next week, same place, same time, to learn more about tomorrow's world. To learn more about today's topic, visit www.twcanada.org to read or order your free copy of Prophecy Fulfilled, God's Hand in World Affairs. It explores how Bible prophecies impact the rise and fall of nations, both in the past and the future. You can also order by calling us at 1-866-784-7895. Call 1-866-784-7895. Or by writing to us at Tomorrow's World, PO Box 409, Mississauga, Ontario, L5M 0P6. You will also receive a free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, revealing God's principles for living an abundant and happy life while providing insight into current and future events. At our website, you can also watch this and many more Tomorrow's World programs. Call 1-866-784-7895. Call, write, or visit us online today. This program is a production of The Living Church of God.